data share is a product that comes out of the history of data point corporation hello i'm kirby heron with data point corporation I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the history of data point we started back in 1968 as computer terminal corporation supplying a solid state replacement for teletypes in effect a glass teletype with this success in hand in 1971, we, we reincorporated as DataPoint Corporation and introduced our first product, that of the DataPoint 2200. With this early involvement in the traditional data processing industry, as a background, we then chose to venture into and deal with the dispersed data processing networks. The concept of dispersed data processing was introduced by DataPoint in 1971. This introduction was based on another concept, that of intelligent data entry. By intelligent data entry, we mean the ability to put terminals in the hands of the users at the remote location. And through the use of those terminals, those people in those remote locations, where the data is, can do the entry themselves. That means that the people who are doing the work are the people who are most familiar with the information being handled. Now this intelligent data entry system also provided many, many editing functions. An array of editing capabilities such as table lookups, range checking, check digit verification, those sorts of things. The idea is that as the information was being entered into the system, any errors could be detected right then and corrected by the people who knew the information and who were dealing with that information on the spot. In addition to that basic idea of gathering the data intelligently, we also were able to, for multiple users, capture their information, store that information on a local system, and then subsequently forward that information via telecommunications to the host mainframe. Now, that provided many benefits. The primary benefit being the information handled where it is. We also were able to save a lot of time and effort on the side of the mainframe because when we did introduce that information to the mainframe, the number of edit runs, error reports, those sorts of things were greatly reduced. Now, that system was DataShare. DataShare is the system that provides this intelligent data entry to multiple users at the same time. The system was originally based on the data point 2200. It's a 16K mini computer, very friendly looking as you can see, does not look like a computer. But based on that small, comfortable, business machine looking system, we were able to provide many of these services to our users. Now data bus is the language that we use to subsequently handle the multi-terminal environment via data share. Data bus as a language is broken up into two pieces. The first piece is what you can look at as working storage. It's the information that the user is dealing with right then, adding, subtracting those, those editing criteria. There's then what we call, what you might call, the procedure division. And that's where the function gets done, the add, subtract, the reading of information and the writing of that information. The original data share system allowed up to eight users at the same time to share the resources of the data point 2200 mini computer. The 2200 is a 16K machine, as I mentioned a little while ago. And through the data share interpretive system, we allowed up to eight 16K programs running in a virtual mode. Now, in addition to that, the system had, of course, disk storage. In those days, that was a little two and a half megabyte disk, one removable cartridge, and two and a half fixed disk. Of course, there are also printing capabilities for reports either locally prepared or prepared at the host mainframe. Now, the connection to those terminals out in the remote locations was based upon what we call the multi-port communications adapter. And this is one of the MPCAs. Now you'll notice on this side, there's a series of connections. Those connections are an RS-232C interface connection. That means that 
the terminals can be connected fairly close to the system, just via some cable, or they can also connect to telephone lines, which means that remote location may be New York City, while the, the 2200 might be sitting in Los Angeles, as an example. Now, in addition to the, the processor and the disk, the printing capability, and of course the terminals, we have other peripherals available on that system. Magnetic tape is available, card readers, those sorts of things. And of course, communication. The real idea in those days was to capture that information, transmit it to the host mainframe, receive back reports, which we can produce locally, and support that intelligent data entry function. Now, with that system as a base, we have now had eight years to mature that product, eight years to provide additional features to that product that our users have asked for. Data share, like any good product, has had several renditions, using that maturity to bring forth a better product every time. An example is Data Share 3, which was introduced in 1973. One of the things that Data Share 3 gave us was the ability to handle more than one type of terminal directly into the system. When we started in the 1972 time frame, it was our 3360 terminal, very much like the teletype. In 1973, we also introduced our 3600. Now, this was less expensive than the 3360, plus it had additional features. Data Share 3 allowed a user to have both of those terminals on the system at the same time. Flexibility as well as these key components. Those were the things we were really seeking. In 1975, we introduced the 5500 processor. The 5500, as you can see, is identical on the exterior to that of a 2200. However, it is a 48K machine, much more memory. It is a much faster computer. It has a larger instruction set, so we were now able to do significantly better things and more of them than we could handle with the 2200. One of the major requirements identified by the customers was the number of terminals being handled at one time. As we said on the 2200, it was eight terminals. Well, now with the 5500, we provided the capability of supporting up to 16 terminals concurrently. In addition to the 5500, we also made some other introductions. Another type of disk with significantly more storage available to it and also significantly faster than the original disk system we provided. Other printers have been provided. Faster printers, more volumes being required in those remote locations. And of course, we continually enhanced our communications capability, still providing that release of information for the host mainframe. Now, we do want to touch again upon the fact that this machine looks the same and it operates almost identically. And a key point there is the investment in software. We had a, a large investment in our software, the data share system and all the utilities attendant to it, and our customers had very large investments in their application software. The, the, the introduction of this machine was such that all of that software, ours and theirs, continued to run. It just ran faster. This is the philosophy of DataPoint to provide better product to you, but with minimal conversion effort and certainly minimal expense. Even with the introduction of the 5500, our users still were not satisfied with the capabilities provided and continued to ask for more. Some of the ideas that they had were in the area of more terminal capabilities and whatnot, but also additional ways to manage those remote systems, to deal with networks, and make better availability of those resources they already had. So in 1975, the latter part of 1975, we introduced DataShare 4, the next step. This next step provided two very powerful capabilities to the user. Those capabilities are, first, data share networking, or DSNet, as we call it. 
Now, DSNet is not a separate facility, but it is an integral part of DataShare. An example of the use of DSNet would be where I've got a, a good size central data, data share system. And in the remote location, the, for instance, the diskette-based data entry machines. Now, there's a certain amount of the editing and validating that can, take care of, can be taken care of in the remote location. That remote location can then dial into the central machine, use the resources, the additional database, and all of that sort of thing at the central. The resources of the remote are also available to the central machine. Now, what that means is I can bring information in, do a supplemental edit to it, and if, in fact, errors are detected, I can go back to the printer on that remote system and immediately print that report. That means that the turnaround for error corrective procedures can be immediate and in place out there in that remote location. Some information over here that will show you graphically how that system operates. The second facility provided another communications mechanism that we call multi-link. Multi-link, again, is an integral part of data share. It is no more than a telephone line handler. What that means is I can do, for instance, an interrogation of my local data. If the information is not available locally, I can immediately route that request to another system, perhaps a host mainframe, perhaps another data point system. The answer can then be derived from that other machine, brought back, and automatically provided to the person at the terminal. Now, that's a very simple concept, and it turns out that it's very simply implemented via very high-level statements. Send and receive. That's exactly how simple it is. There is used in our international market an additional multi-link mechanism called pole link by which multiple terminals can sit on one telephone line. The users, again, came back to us and said, I need a little more in the way of capability. So in 1976, we introduced the 6600. Again, it looked like a 5500, which looked like a 2200. It was still friendly, easily used. However, Again, it was significantly faster than the 5500. It had up to 120K of memory, so we got more users, more information available to the users. It was able to now support 24 concurrent tasks. So we went from 8 on the 2200, 16 on the 5500, and now 24 on a single 6600 system. In addition to the 6600 processor, we announced another type of disk. This was a 10 over 10 disk, 10 megabytes over 10 megabytes. 10 megabytes removable, 10 fixed, and you could hang additional drives in either 20 or 40 megabyte increments to go up to 160 megabytes on one machine. This, of course, did not fully complete the requirements of the users. So in 1977, we took another very, very major step and that was the introduction of ARC, the Attached Resource Computer System. And with the ability to link as many of these 6600 processors up together, I could now have as many terminals as I could ever hope to imagine. With the introduction of ARC came the introduction of DataShare 5. DataShare 5 took advantage of the facilities of ARC and one of the major points in DataShare 5 is it provided a mechanism by which many, many users could go after shared information, common data files, and DataShare 5 would then resolve the conflict between those data files so that information would not be mishandled. An additional peripheral that we provided with the ARC announcement was what we call the direct channel adapter. This is uh, an interface mechanism by which we hook directly onto the IBM and IBM compatible byte multiplexer channel. Again, opening another path of information flow between the host mainframe system and the data point system. 
It is faster, of course. It does not have to adhere to standard telecommunications mechanisms and speeds. Another advantage. That leads us up to right now, today, and the next version of DataShare is being made available to you, and that's DataShare 6. Now you ask, what does DataShare 6 provide to me? There are four major points that are being addressed with DataShare 6. Performance. Over the years, we have paid a price in performance to get some of these features. DataShare 6 gives you that performance and maintains those levels of features already available. The next point is AIM. That is the associative index method. A totally new concept in data handling. A totally flexible mechanism for you to deal with the data the way you want to rather than the way the computer used to tell you to. Next is an increase in user data area so that now each program can handle more data at one time, more counters, more information. And last is a new change to our utility partition supervisor system where we can now take much better advantage of the memory available on those machines, which takes us back to performance. Data share today is available on large or small systems, as large or as small as you need. We can have the small 1500 system for uh, a standalone or relatively small operation, the 1800 for a little more speed, more terminals, more disk storage. These are floppy diskette based systems, by the way. We could go to a standalone hard disk system, such as a 6600 with 20 megabytes of disk. And of course, we can go to ARC to encompass virtually as large a system as your business can grow to. DataShare as a system is evolutionary, not revolutionary. It is designed to help you, to help you address your business needs. The system is available to you quickly from the time you order the appropriate hardware until that hardware is delivered. You can get that system up and running quickly. The system is easy to use, easy to program, and easy to manage. And it's available now. 